Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome to Weld Beaver. On the last show, we did a little bit of TIG welding aluminum on a project. This time, we're going to go ahead and do some basics of TIG welding aluminum. I hope you'll enjoy it. Stick with me. Here we go. Okay, so I thought we'd start this out by uh, basically talking about the machine and the settings. Uh, as you can see, I'm using a uh, inverter style machine. And uh, in order to weld aluminum, you must have the machine set to AC. As you can see, the AC part is uh, illuminated, so we know we're on AC polarity. Outside of that, there's really not a lot I'm going to take too much time to explain here. Anyhow, the next thing I want to show you is that today, for today's uh, exercise, we're going to be welding at about 120, 121 amps. And the only other setting I want to show you here is that our, our AC balance is at 70 and our frequency is at 120 hertz. So uh, if you have an inverter machine, I recommend these settings for this particular type of exercise on aluminum. Again, I'm not going to get into detail about what they mean. All I'm going to say though is that this is a very basic, average, honest setting that uh, works pretty well and is pretty versatile for basic aluminum TIG welding. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the TIG torch. Uh, this particular one happens to be water cooled, however for this application at low amperage we really don't need that, it just so happens this is what's hooked up in my shop and so it makes it easier to use it. Uh, the first thing I want to discuss is the cup. Uh, I don't think I've ever really seen anybody get into detail about the cup. Basically this is a Lumina cup and it's meant uh, in order to funnel the shielding gas out through from the collet body onto the molten puddle. If you'll notice on this uh, guy here, uh, there is a number on it, and it's a number 8. You can get a shot of that. Uh, the number 8 refers to the opening, the diameter opening of the top here where the gas comes out, where it's expelled from. Uh, the number 8 refers to a size, and it's a size in inches. <clears throat> Every uh, number designation uh, indicates a sixteenth of an inch, so in this case, what we have here is eight sixteenths of an inch. So how is that significant? Well we know eight sixteenths of an inch basically reduces down to a half inch and so it tells me that this opening is a half inch in diameter. So why do we need to know that? Well because basically uh, the size of the opening of the cup is dependent upon the size of the tungsten. And if you read some of the literature out there the recommendation is that the opening, the size of the opening of the alumina cup should be three times the diameter of the tungsten. Okay, so basically that means that three times three thirty seconds is nine thirty seconds. Well, we can't really reduce nine thirty seconds down to the sixteen, so we'll actually round up to ten thirty seconds, which gives us five sixteenths. And five sixteenths is basically would, would make it a number five cup. So the reality is that I would be okay using a number five cup for this particular size of tungsten. That would be more than enough uh, and not waste any gas. Now obviously I have an eight, which is larger than I need to have. Uh, however, uh, I like to have a larger uh, opening on my alumina cup. I just feel I get a better uh, gas uh, coverage with a bigger opening. I'm not worried about uh, wasting gas, especially not on a paid uh, project. Uh, it's okay by me. I'd rather have the ad added uh, gas coverage and the ability to stick the tungsten out further, which is what you get when you have a bigger opening, particularly with a gas lens. So anyhow, that's how that works. Okay, you see in here inside the gas lens there's a little bit of a mesh in there, and that mesh equally distributes the shielding gas and it does so in such a way that you get better coverage of shielding gas over your puddle. I highly recommend gas lenses. They're really intended more for difficult metals to weld like stainless steel and aluminum, but I seem to use a gas lens on just about everything I do just because I like the way it uh, disperses the gas in a nice uniform manner and it ends up in a better uh, looking weld in my opinion. Uh, things flow better and everything works a lot better. So. Uh, I use gas lenses exclusively. This is the tungsten and you can see it's sharpened. We've been using it a little bit so it's developed a tiny little ball at the end. That's what happens when you run on AC. Okay, so for this particular tungsten being a uh, 332nd tungsten, 
Uh, you might wonder, well, what's the difference in size? Why do I need one over the other? Well, the reason is because the diameter of the tungsten determines how much amperage you can put through it. On a 332nd tungsten, if you're welding on DC negative, uh, the amperage range for this is between 130 and 250 amps. So a maximum of 250. And if you're welding on AC, the amperage range is roughly between 135 and 235. The next thing I'm going to talk about is tungsten grinding and grinding tungstens. Now there are a lot of methods out there. Uh, probably the most common is to just take a tungsten on a regular old grinder and uh, grind it down. However, uh, tungsten is easily contaminated so if you're going to use a regular bench grinder to grind your tungsten, you can only use it for tungsten grinding. This particular device that you see here is something that I came up with and it's a very simple thing. It's a bender that's been affixed to a, a board here with a switch. Uh, this is the type of binder that has a permanent on off switch and that's why this works. Also known as a suicide switch. This particular grinding wheel here is actually a, a diamond impregnated wheel which works beautifully for sharpening tungsten. When you sharpen a tungsten you need to make sure that the direction of the sharpening is straight into the tungsten. You cannot grind it from the side like this, you have to grind into it. And the reason for that is because if you grind sideways, your, the, the, the grinding marks will actually cause the arc to deflect out to the sides and that will not be good. Versus if you come in straight on it like so, your marks, your grind marks will come in straight and actually the straightness of those marks will cause the arc to go straight out and through to the point. So in order to make this really work, I like to use a cordless drill and I go ahead and I take my tungsten and I chuck it up into this cordless drill and you can see it now spins. So this is going to get kind of loud, you won't hear me here, but I'm going to flip the switch and I'll show you how I grind this tungsten. So there you have it. You see I got a real nice point on this tungsten which is perfect for an inverter style machine. Uh, no need to snub the tip. A nice sharp point is always good. And you see how quickly that works. So this is really a time saving device to have a, a, little, uh, a little tungsten sharpener, homemade tungsten sharpener like this. Okay so in order to weld today uh, the last thing on the list that we'll need is filler material. And this particular filler wire is a 332nd 4043 aluminum. Okay, so here we have a piece that I've kind of been welding on just to uh, take some shots, some test shots on. And if you notice, I've built up so much weld here that it's actually pretty thick in the center. Aluminum is extremely thermally conductive. And what that means is when you hit heat into a specific point on aluminum, it doesn't just stay there, it actually spreads out through the entirety of the piece. And that's what thermal conductivity means. It just conducts the heat all over the place. So because of that, it makes it difficult to weld. You really need to get a lot of heat into that spot because as you're pumping heat, it's just spreading out and going all over the place. It's not staying where it needs to be. So when you start on something like this, especially something like this that's already pretty thick, you're gonna have to lay into this piece for quite a while before your puddle develops. And that is probably the biggest mistake that newbie welders make when they're starting with aluminum is that they are impatient and they don't wait long enough for that puddle to form before they start adding filler uh, material. And that can be a problem because if you don't actually have your base material fluid to where there's fusion occurring, uh, then basically you're almost braze welding where you're just adding uh, melted filler material to the base material and you're not getting proper fusion. So it's very important before you ever take your first dip of filler material that you make sure a puddle is formed and that it's fluid. And in this instance it's going to be, uh, it's going to take a while to get that started based on the amperage that we've set and based on the thickness of this. And I'm not going to adjust the amperage up, although I could, to make it happen. I'm going to keep the amperage low at 120 so that you can see just how long it takes 
to get this going. The last and this thing I want to discuss before we start welding is the way to hold the, properly hold the torch. If you notice here, the way I have it in my hand is basically I'm holding the, the barrel of the torch here, the handle, as if though I were handling a pencil. Uh, that's the way I, this is the way I write when I'm writing with a pencil. This is the way that the torch should be properly held. Now granted, if your position is kind of funky, you gotta get into weird position. Sometimes you gotta turn it around, or come this way, or even sometimes hold it like so. Okay, so we're gonna get started with the weld here. Uh, the first thing you're gonna notice is just how long I'm gonna set on that one area where I began the weld. Uh, just because, again, this weld is completely cold. The metal is cold. I have not preheated it, so it's gonna take a good long time to get this thing fluid enough to be able to add filler metal and even once uh, I have that in there you're gonna notice that uh, once I get going I still have to go slowly uh, because the piece continues to draw the heat right out of the uh, puddle and right out of the area there so the first pass is definitely a slow go process one thing I'd like to mention right now too is uh, we talked a little bit about uh, heat and whatnot and it's uh, imperative that your aluminum be very clean and the first thing you want to do is you want to wipe it down with acetone or alcohol or something to that effect that way you can get any kind of oils or residues that might be on there off and then after you've done that you want to definitely make sure to use a stainless steel brush to remove any oxide layer that might be on the surface of the metal um, it's very very important because oxides melt at 3600 degrees Fahrenheit and the aluminum melts at 1200 degrees Fahrenheit so so make sure to go ahead and clean those oxides off otherwise you will have problems last thing I want to mention as we come to the termination of the weld is that uh, you'll notice that at the very end of an aluminum weld it's very important to add a little extra filler metal and to ease off on the pedal ease off on the amperage because if not you don't add that extra filler metal and you don't ease off gently you'll end up with a little crater at the end which will result in cracking okay so for the last part of this I'd just like to describe what's going on here in this video and basically uh, now that there's more heat into it things are going a lot quicker as you can see I'm just basically making sure that the puddle has formed and is fluid and dabbing as I go and just continuing along the well in that fashion the whole time trying to adjust the uh, pedal in order to increase or decrease the amperage based on what's going on in front of me so I can try to keep a uniform size. Okay, so if you notice here, we have a very nice shiny weld. And if you do everything right and you have good gas coverage and your tungsten is clean, your metal is clean, and your filler material is clean, this is what you should get. Nice, bright, shiny aluminum weld. Notice this. Here you have some black smut. Now this particular smut comes from the filler material that I'm using. If you look at this filler rod, you see here how I have a little lump there? This is from joining two pieces of filler material together. Now I'm doing this because I'm just practicing here. I wouldn't do this for an actual job but I'm doing this for the sake of practice in order to be conservative with the uh, filler material but when you do something like this it puts contaminants into it and that's what happened here at the end a little ball of this with contaminated substance hit this area and created this black smut here it's good that you see it because if you do see this in your weld you'll know why it's coming from some form of contamination either in your filler material on your base material or on your tungsten or perhaps from a lack of gas coverage and so ends yet another adventure at weld fever hey i hope you guys enjoyed this video i know i certainly enjoyed making it don't forget to rate comment and subscribe and if you have any questions about anything covered today make sure you include those in the comment section below and if you have any suggestions for future videos please include those too we'll see you on the next one